strong survivors. Yeah. We live in this till the day that we die. Survivors are the fit only strong survivors. Yeah. We live in this is Vincent Von Doom with Disaster Survival Network's weekly radio show. We're going to be interviewing Keith Iton. He's a pastor turned prepper. He uh, has his own website that sells uh, survival food, and uh, he also has a book called uh, Prepper and Preacher, a Spiritual Survival Guide. And without further ado, Keith Iton. Good morning. Good morning, Keith. Keith Iton. Am I pronouncing your name right? You pronounced it absolutely right. Oh, I am so glad we're finally interviewing you. I've been wanting to get you on the show ever since I met you at the Mid-Atlantic Preparedness Expo, and I'm really excited because you are the man to talk to right now, especially with everything that's going on. With I have a lot of questions for you about um, ISIS and the persecution of Christians and all that. Let me start off by reading your uh, your bio real quick. Keith Eiton is an African-American non-denominational pastor and owner of the preparedness website Food Survival Store. He has appeared on numerous television programs, radio shows, and print publications. He holds a bachelor's degree in political science from Syracuse University, as well as a communications degree from Westchester Community College. He travels worldwide teaching on the importance of emergency preparedness, as well as the kingdom of God. Currently, he resides in North Carolina with his wife, Angela, and their two children. He is the author of the new book, The Prepper and the Preacher, A Spiritual Survival Guide. All right. So your book, it, it's an amazing book. I went on Amazon and I was looking at some of the reviews. Uh, you had a ton of reviews and they were all five-star reviews. Everyone who reads it is saying good things. My, uh, when I brought the book back from the uh, expo, my mother-in-law, like, grabbed it out of my hands and said, oh, can I borrow this? I, I really want to read it. And uh, you touch upon um, an aspect that not too many people talk about when it comes to prepping and, and survival. You're, you're a preacher, right? A pastor? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how, long have you, how long have you been a, a pastor? Uh, just a few short years. And, I mean, I was in uh, ministry for a little while, and then holding the title of a pastor. It's only been a few years. And I've been a Christian for some years, but I've been like most people. I've been a backsliding Christian, that's the term they use, or a wayward Christian for a good part of my life, basically saying I was a Christian but not practicing it and basically being like everybody else, just doing what I want to do, living the way I wanted to live my life. <laughs> so that's why I always... I'm always easy on people in terms of I don't judge people. I just try to show them the way because I've been there. I've been down that road. I was a, you know, I worked in media, but I also was one of the biggest whoremongers on the planet, man. I was a hardcore party animal at one point in my life. I mean, I was one of the guys that you go go on YouTube, you'd see, literally, you can go on YouTube, type in my name or type in Icon Entertainment. I leave that up there deliberately so people can see my past life. They'll see videos of me working with Grammy, Grammy award-winning rap artists and, and doing music videos and all that stuff. I was living that life, you know, gold teeth, gold chains, you know, hardcore, some hardcore stuff, some nights that I'd rather for, want to forget now that I'm a pastor, but I have to be honest with the young people too, to say that, Hey, I've been there. I've done that. That's not the way to go. But in terms of that, God did get a hold of me because he always had a calling on my life to do exactly what I'm doing, and that's prepping and warning people to prepare because he's prepared me for this years ago, but I've been kind of like running away from it, like I don't want to hear it, God. Pick somebody else, and he's kind of like, no, dude, you're the one I want. <laughs> so yeah. I got, I, I kind of had to run. I kind of, I tried to run, but it didn't work. And the prepping aspect of things is kind of weird how it worked, me getting into that because um, my brother, it started years back, my older brother who passed away now, he was a Christian missionary, and he was the one who kind of sparked it for me years ago when I was a teenager. You know, I used to want to just hear about the latest rap song or Michael Jordan playing which game on TV, and my brother used to be like, no, man, you got to start paying attention to this stuff. You know, he teach me stuff about the New World Order the mark of the beast and stuff like that. And that's stuff you don't hear too often in, a.k.a. the hood, in, you know, in 
we were living in Miami at a bad time at, at that time, and he was, you know, reading all these new books on that stuff, you know, talking about microchip society and all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, I don't want to hear that crap, man. That's like far out stuff. And my brother was like, dude, listen to me. And he was, he said it prophetically. I didn't even understand it because he had that gift. He said, dude, you got to pay attention and learn this stuff now because you're going to be the one who's going to live through it. And I, I never understood why he would say that until years later, you know, it's all come to, you know, full circle. I'm like, oh, and of course, we're living through it now, as you yeah. can see. <laughs> um, we got a lot in common as far as that. Um, I, I was brought up Christian, Catholic, and um, we lived in, a, in, a, in an Italian uh, neighborhood, and everyone you know, went to church and stuff. But when when I was a kid, I found it very boring. And uh, as I got older, I, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, I, I kind of wanted to find my own way, um, and uh, I got into trouble, too. I got into the, the same thing, the party scene. Uh, my friends used to throw raves, massive raves in um, the city and stuff like that. I got into, you know, hip-hop, too. And uh, I almost died a few times in, uh, you know, car accidents. And uh, it, I, sh- I really should have died a few times. I had to have massive blood transfusions, stuff like that. But uh, I feel like uh, God saved me for a reason. And... Um, when I was younger, my my mom used to take me into like Manhattan, and I, I was only like uh, like six or seven. And I remember walking, and there was these uh, chain letters on the floor, and I picked one up, and it it said microchip six 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 mark of the beast, and it showed this little in, injectable microchip. And they actually have those things now. I, I've seen them; they're like the size of a grain of uh, rice. And now that I, I look back. And I start to see the stuff that I heard about when I was younger and stuff they talk about in the the book of Revelations and the Bible. And when it's unfolding right in front of you, it, it may, makes you, like, question it again. Like, think of it like, whoa, maybe there is something to, to, to all this. You know, maybe maybe it all is real, you know. So I, too, started getting back into religion and spirituality um, recently, and um, when when did you decide to become a prepper? Well, you know, it's interesting you ask that. Like I said, my brother, he planted those seeds, and because when he was teaching me all this stuff, he also started, you know, teaching us a little bit, you know, just giving me the basics, you know, that just always saying we need to have extra food at all times and extra water stored in the house, and we were actually doing that in my family because uh, we grew up in South Florida a good chunk of my life. I lived in New York later on when my mom and dad uh, were divorced. But down in Miami with my mom, we always had food and water out of the, just out of a habit because of the hurricanes could come at any time. And my mother is from the, actually from Jamaica. So my mom is used to things hitting the fan. I mean, living in Jamaica, which is, you know, what they call a third world country, when a hurricane comes, there ain't no help from the government coming for a long time. <laughs> so guess what? You better have some supplies put aside. <laughs> so my mom already had that habit in her. That like, you go to my mom's house right now, you'll find canned goods all over the place and bottles, lots of bottled water. So he, when my brother was kicking this stuff, we were already kind of doing it, you know, just on the hurricane stance. But he, of course. He, had a, he started getting a preparedness mindset on the spiritual and the natural side, so he wanted it ramped up a bit. So he planted those major seeds. And then years later, years later when I started coming out my my, uh, my party phase, I actually had started, um, went back, started, you know, getting back closer to God and stuff and reading the Bible more and stuff like that. Then I started just, that's just the way, it's weird how God does things. He started putting people in my path who were preppers. And these people... I would, you know, I would sit there and just learn from them. And I'm talking about he put, like, older people, like people who are 60, 60 years old who have been prepping since the 70s. That's what he put in my path. And they taught me some of the old school stuff. I got a lot of old school knowledge for prepping. <laughs> so it was just a blessing that I got to – he put those people in my path, and then I started really just started taking it a little more serious because, you know, I, got a, I have a wife and I have kids. And I, to be honest, I knew a lot of this stuff, but it's amazing what kids do to you. When you get your own kid, you kind of start realizing, wait a second, 
it's not about me anymore. I have to look out for them. And when I was single without kids, and I knew a lot of this Mark of the Beast and New World Order stuff and all this stuff, I didn't take prepping seriously at all. I was like, hey, if it happens, it happens. You know, I'm not taking no chip. They can chop my head off. Big deal. I'm, uh, I'm not going to deny Jesus like that. But then when I got a children, I started saying, you know what, even if it doesn't get that bad, I always want to be at least prepared to make sure my kids will be all right, that, that – you know, if anything happens to their old man, they can say, you know what, my old man, he left some things for us. My old man, he, he looked out for us, after us. And that's, that's what you want to do as a, as, a, as a Christian anyway, or as even as a, as a responsible parent. You always want to just look out for your kids. So that's kind of how it all started. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I got a lot more serious when I, when I had my, my daughter, uh, Viana. Um, 9/11 was uh, pretty big for me too. That was a pretty big eye opener. And then, uh, but even before that, there was the uh, Y2K. I guess for me, it was it started around Y2K is when I caught the the prepping bug. With, when everyone was saying, "Oh, we're going to have all these major uh, computer crashes, planes are going to fall out of the sky," and then nothing really happened with that. And then there, then there was 9/11, and then after that, there was the whole uh, 2012 mine apocalypse. And uh, ever since then, I've I've just really been into it. Um, we moved upstate. We bought a house. Uh, it's in the middle of the mountains, and uh, we got the survival network. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, uh, I love it, man. But um, I didn't know you were in the I didn't know you were in the mountains too, man. I'm in the mountains of Western North Carolina, so see, great minds think alike. You know, there's, there's, a biblical, there's actually a biblical theme of whenever there's trouble, you go to the mountains. It's all in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's, it's beautiful this time of year. All, all the leaves are changing color. We're, we're prepping the house, getting ready for winter because it does get pretty cold cold up here. You know, you got to chop a lot of firewood, extra insulation, and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, it's gorgeous. Um, I planted my first garden for the first time. But um, that's all stuff that the Bible talks about, you know, planting a garden, um, being friendly with your neighbor, stuff like that. I, I wasn't friendly with my neighbors when I lived in, in the city. Um, and now it's like people, they want to help each other out. You know, people, other people, they either just wave to you or they shut the door or they, they think the person living next door is a terrorist or something like that. Over here, it's not, up here, it's not like that. Everyone um, really relies on each other and uh, it's great. Yeah, but, um, you know, it's funny It's funny you even mention that, brother. It's just like I'm in the mountains of western North Carolina, and there's not many black people here. And being African-American, you know, there's a, the people think that it's, you know, people are always racist. That's not true. There's a lot, I have a lot of good neighbors who I can say pretty much uh, 90% of them don't, I don't think are racist and they're good people, and we all look out for each other. And you know, that's just that's where you just that's where you want to raise your kids. We're just you know, neighbors are friendly. They have good moral values, a good moral compass. You know, where in the cities, I, I live there too, brother. <laughs> I know how ugly it can get. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's going on with the the whole racism thing right now? I mean, I was never racist. Um, I always had a lot of. Uh, multicultural friends growing up, different races, different religions. And um, I uh, I grew up listening to hip-hop. And um, I thought, like, during the 80s and 90s, especially because of hip-hop, you know, black and white people became a lot closer. You saw a lot more interracial um, relationships and, and marriages. Um, I know a lot of people who have, who have uh, children from interracial marriages. And they're some of the most beautiful children I've ever seen. And um, I would think that, you know, by now we wouldn't have any of that, but it seems like we're taking a step backwards. Do you, do you have any opinion as to why that is, that it's like, why it seems like we're moving backwards instead of forward? It almost seems like it's a repeat of the 1960s race riots. Yeah, you know what, you're right, and I'm gonna, it's a twofold answer for that one, dude. First of all, it's a spirit, racism. It's actually it's a nasty spirit, and the Bible 
the, if you read the Bible closely, there's numerous different kinds of spirits. You can have a spirit of wisdom, which is a good spirit from God, but then you have a spirit of hatred and the spirit of malice and all these things. And racism is actually a spirit. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing. There's no no good fruit coming with that spirit. And it always starts from the top. I think certain people in leadership in our country they brought that spirit in to the into the top levels of government in the White House, etc. And they, and it trickle was a trickle down effect of that spirit coming in. Um, with that with that said, with it being a spirit, we do have um, some problems in the country. But then again, on the flip side of it people that are really tuning in, who are truly listening to God, who are starting to read the Bible, getting the word more, they always overcome it. Case in point, when that crap happened in South Carolina, which is right next door to me with the, the shooting at that black church, what happened was Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, they wanted to come down and give their quote-unquote speech but you know what? A lot of the community of Christians, both black and white, did not want Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson in the vicinity, and they yes. made it known. Because those two guys, who I know they're just Christians in title, not Christians in their walk, those two guys would have made the situation worse. And what happened was the people of South Carolina in those communities, both black and white, they got together together and held each other up and held up those families from that tragedy. And a lot of the prayers and the love of Christ was exhibited amongst each other where the wounds were healed and people were really able to gel and come together as one in that community. And you know what? Things just things worked out for the better. But had, I bet you if they would have let those guys come down there and start their race baiting and all that stuff like that, there would have been some riots, man. And this yeah. is where, you know, as – especially as Christians, we got to really just stick to the teachings of Christ. we got to try to be Christ-like in our behavior. And when you do that, I mean, you, we can go so much further. Um, I, I, I do a lot of preparedness shows, and I also do gun shows selling preparedness products. And I can tell you, I've gone into some racist areas around the country selling stuff. I'm in the South, mind you. So I've been in some racist areas, but because I have – the spirit of Christ on me, and when people talk to me and they know, they're like, yo, this black dude is a real Christian. They, I get so much friends, and I become friends with some of these people who otherwise would sometimes say, I don't even want to mess with this guy. Then they say, no, this guy, he's a real deal. They become like lifelong friends because they, see, they don't see the skin in color anymore. They see, they see Jesus Christ in me. And that's the way as all Christians, if we can learn to be like that, and follow Christ as best as we can, I'm telling you, people won't even see your skin color. I've seen the same thing with white guys when I, was, when I, who, when I used to live in, in the bad neighborhoods in Miami. White Christians who were real Christians, when they would come through, nobody would trouble them because people saw, really saw in their actions that they were real Christians. So they were held that they were really respected, where if it was a, if it was a guy who was just a, you know, just some some you know, a social worker or a tax collector, then, of course, you get beat up. <laughs> yeah. Well, Christians are some of the, the nicest, caring people I've ever met in my whole life. And uh, that's why I can't understand why, um, you know, there's all these uh, Christian persecution going on in the Middle East. Uh, they're getting their heads cut off, and it doesn't really seem like Obama really even cares or, or is even doing anything about it. Um, Russia is attacking ISIS, uh, in two weeks, they've done more than we did in an entire year. It makes me wonder if we were even bombing them or if, if the president was somehow funding ISIS. And then, um, mm. you know, he invited Al Sharpton to the White House 80 different times. What is Al Sharpton doing at the White House 80 different times? What are they talking about? And at the same time as all these different Ferguson riots and all these other things, I think that they're using um, race and religion as a way to keep the people divided. Well, there, that's a, that, that, my friend, that has been a long tool of the globalists and the globalist agenda. This is much bigger than Obama, much bigger than people can realize. Obama, he's just, he's a tool. That's it. They're using one of their tools to try to get a means done. The whole thing is divide and conquer. The globalists know that. To conquer the United States fully, 
They have to divide us and then conquer us. The Bible says a house divided cannot stand. That's one mm-hmm. thing that they've known and they've studied it. Um, in terms, I find it funny with Al Sharpton not to even get into politics too much because I want to stay focused for the preppers. But you hit a good point. Uh, Al Sharpton, he has, uh, he's under, he has, he owes the IRS, I mean, millions of dollars. And yet there hasn't been the scrutiny or anything for Al Sharpton under this administration. But yet Ben Carson, who's a conservative, black conservative, he, they, the IRS tried to run him through the mill. So it's kind of funny how that works, you know, how Selective Ben Carson targeting treated. of uh, IRS enforcement. Yeah, you see what I mean? But yet Sharpton, yeah. he's been, like, given a pass, and he's allowed to visit the White House <laughs> all those times. So that kind of tells you what's going on see, in our me, country. So this all goes back to prepping and survival, though, because uh, I just watched this great movie on Netflix last night. It was called... Uh, Winter Revolution or Winter in the Ukraine. It was about the Ukrainian Revolution. And I I think the people in this country have had enough. I, I think they realize exactly what's going on. A lot of people are waking up. And we're gonna, very shortly, we're going to find ourselves in a, in a collapse situation, whether from the economy or just people saying we want our government back. We are no longer in control. And they're, they're going to storm Washington, D.C. the same way uh, they did it in Ukraine, and it's going to be a violent revolution. And people have to prepare for that. They have to be prepared for any eventualities, any breakdowns in the system. And uh, that all goes back to prepping. But um, Yeah, it's, it's, let me tell you, I like the way this conversation is flowing because, man, we're hitting on some topics. See, I'm, I'm going to say some stuff through this conversation that you won't hear the average preacher get up and say, especially the TV preachers, they don't say the stuff that I say. I tell people to get ready and start preparing now physically and spiritually. That's my message. That's what I'm called to do because I know, like I know, like I know, like the back of my hand is black. I know what's coming to the United States, and we're we're in for a rough ride, but I also know God protects his children. So we do the best we can, whatever we can do to the best of our ability, you do the best you can, and then God, you have to trust God to take care of the rest. Um, right now, we just like you said, we're facing a lot of that stuff. And there's been numerous uh, prophecies from different Christian pastors. And, uh, and the funny thing, not just the ones in this country, ones from around the world, regarding some of the stuff that's coming down the pike. And they, they hit on the stuff you just said, and it's even going to get worse. <laughs> yeah. Well... There's a lot more to survival than just stocking up on, uh, you know, food and extra ammunition. Um, during any major disaster or in war, it, it, it's traumatizing. And um, morale is very important in a survival situation. Um, that's why they, people, they need, a, they need a warm meal, um, clean clothes. But uh, if you've just seen your family or friends that got their head blown off, I mean, how do you stay together? Like that—that's why you either need you need God in your life, you need, you need spirituality. Like most people, either they either use drugs as a crutch, they either have God, or other people that they, they have their, their children that that keep them going. But the um, the psychology of survival, um, it has a lot to do with it, and uh, I think people neglect that that fact and. Uh, they don't realize how, how bad things can really get. Like even even during Katrina here in the United States, uh, there there was there was people dead in, um, in the in wheelchairs, people getting raped, and it just it turned into a war zone right here in the uh, in the United States. Yeah, and you know what? I, I hate to say it, but it, brother, that's what we're facing. Um, two of the things I'm I'm, I'm the, 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 it's all intertwined. It's, it's a biblical pattern how this stuff always comes down. But we're going to have another uh, Hurricane Katrina-type natural disaster event. I'm telling you it's going to happen again in this country, but on a bigger scale. And Hurricane, Tra- Hurricane Katrina was bad. We used, I mean, we've seen just how bad that things can get, the breakdown of society in just that small area in certain pockets of the South where there was no law enforcement, no authorities. The police didn't even show up in some cases because they were 
more concerned with staying home to take care of their family. And I can't blame them because, you know, you, you can't just leave your wife and kids home alone in that type of mayhem, you know. Yeah. So we, we're going to see some of that stuff. Um, I, there's a couple pastors uh, who have seen visions of a, of a tsunami hitting the United States, kind of like what we saw a few years ago with the Asian tsunami. Um, they're seeing the same vision. I actually had that vision as well. Um, I had that uh, same one. I had a dream that an asteroid hit the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and it caused a major tsunami. And I've been talking to other people, and they've had this same exact vision all across the world. So if all these (laughs) people are are having... If all these people are having this vision of an asteroid hitting the Atlantic Ocean causing a tsunami, there's something to it. If people have yeah. the same continuing um, vision or dream. Man, that's actually in my book. Um, I have this uh, in one chapter, Weather Warfare. I touch on that after the chapter, Multiple Confirmations. Multiple Confirmation deals with the future war that's going to happen in the United States. But Weather Warfare, I actually call it out just like you said, that there's a lot of people having that same vision and dream concerning a tsunami hitting, and some people are saying the reason that tsunami is going to hit is because of a, ast- a meteor of some kind hitting the Atlantic Ocean. And I've done research on it. I haven't seen the actual, in any of the dreams or visions God's given me, I haven't seen an asteroid or meteor, I will say that, but I had seen the actual wave coming to the United States. And I was kind of like, because biblically a wave can be, an actual wave of water, or it can actually be an invading army. But now I have confirmation in my spirit. I actually know we're going to see two different events in the United States. We're going to see an invading army, and we're also going to see a big wave of water, literally. And it's, it's something I don't look forward to. I don't, you know, I don't try to, I'm not, this isn't about fear. This is also about wisdom to know what's coming down the pike. But long story short, if it is um, a wave on that magnitude coming, just a tsunami, the, 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 the amount of damage that's going to happen across our, our coastlines, it's pretty ugly because in, in my particular vision, I saw the water come up to literally, uh, basically, let me put it like this. I was in my uh, old condo, which was in Miami, and I, had, I, was on the, I lived on the ninth floor. And the vision I saw ice water come all the way up to the second floor of my condo. Like literally the parking lot, you couldn't see it anymore where the cars were. They were all covered with water. So that's about, what, 20 feet of water covered, covering the ground in, uh, next to the water, next to the beach in Miami. Um, some people say, hey, you know what, it's possible. When, when, a lot of people don't realize when we had that earthquake in 2010 in Haiti, that major earthquake that killed 300,000 people, the whole entire Caribbean and including South Florida was under tsunami alert just from that particular earthquake. They were under tsunami alert. So we're not, we're, we're not saying anything out, you know, like far-fetched. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to let the listeners understand that, this, look, this stuff is possible. It can happen. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the wave of, uh, like the wave of immigrants uh, in, the, uh, in Europe, they're like suspecting that a lot of them are uh, ISIS members and stuff like that. But um, the same thing is going to say people are trying to s- sneak in through Mexico and that a lot of people are starting to feel there's going to be a massive coordinated attack that dwarfs. Um, it's going to make 9-11 look like, uh, you know, a picnic. And uh, if it, there was ever an EMP attack, what are all, what's going to happen to all the, the nuclear power plants? You know, they, they're going to have to keep those running with... Uh, generators and stuff and if a bunch of those melt down in the United States ooh. well that's where that's where my book comes in because you, you hit a point which it's I mean no one wants to think about it but this is the truth that if that happens just like you said we got it's going to be Fukushima times 10 okay and we're not even prepared for that and that I would definitely see that would be a part of God's divine judgment on our country because our country, believe it or not, has been founded off of Judeo-Christian principles. So when you have um, an agreement with God, we're a covenant nation, when you make an agreement with him and then you back out your agreement and you totally just disrespect him and kick him out of your country, well, God is pretty much a gentleman. 
all he just does is says, okay, well, if you don't want me, I'll just get right out of the way and let somebody else come in. And when he lets someone else come in, it's never a good deal for your country. Um, if that goes down, you know, we're talking like, you know, reactors going down, no grid, no electricity. I mean, people who've seen some of these survival movies, uh, Book of Eli, The Road, uh, we can go down the list of some of these flicks. You're getting a glimpse. Oh, I love that movie, the one with um, the Book of Eli. Yeah, with Denzel. That's my man right there, Denzel. I love yeah. that flick. He is awesome. And we're, we're seeing, you know, just in that, watching that movie, you're seeing just how ugly it can get. But this is where, just like um, the lead character in Book of Eli, Eli himself, that Denzel played, um, you're going to need that relationship with God and to really get into his word. Because when you get into his word, it gets into you, and then the supernatural always takes over. I have a friend, an uh, uh, associate rather, he's a Christian minister. He went over to a certain area of Japan when that radiation was raging, and he had taught some Christians just some of the principles of that Jesus has taught and some of, and so that Christians, we actually have the authority to do it if we know it. And that's one of the biggest things that the devil tries to pull, whether through legislation or just through unbelief, um, is to try to make you think that the Bible is not real, that the words aren't real, and that it's all a fairy tale. But what he basically taught some of these Christians over in Japan, he taught them how to walk and pray over certain areas of radiation, and they did that in some of their neighborhoods, some of these Japanese Christians. I'm going to recent stuff. And their radiation levels went right back down to the normal levels, where other neighborhoods are still screwed up with high levels of radiation. Their area is totally normal. And that's how, this, that's how some of these miracles work for people that can really believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ and the Gospels, what the Word says, that you have the authority to do these things. You could, you know, the Bible simply says if you... you Touch and agree, praying over anything it shall be done of our Father in heaven. So if you and you, another couple of other Christians are believing that God can do these miracles, it's so easy that for God to send an angel and say, okay, clean up that radiation in that neighborhood because my children asked me to. It's, it's literally that easy. But if you're, if you're in that area and you're a, you're a non-Christian who doesn't believe the word, you won't know to pray over the radiation. You won't know to do that. So guess what? You're going to be screwed. I, I hate to make it sound so crude. But you will be like, oh, man, why, why is my hair falling out? Like, why, why is my teeth falling out? But you won't know that you have the authority, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, to pray over these situations, and God can supernaturally send an angel to sit there and say, hey, clean up that radiation over there. And that's the, that's the type of stuff that's in my book, just to, just to let the, the listeners know that I deal with the stuff on the real nitty-gritty survival level that, hey, there's going to be some times where our guns and bullets – they're not going to help us, and radiation is a perfect example. <laughs> yeah. Now, why do you think some of the other uh, the main, mainstream churches, they they don't preach the stuff that you talk about? Like, I, I've been to a, a lot of different churches, and some of them talk about um, preparedness, like storing extra food and stuff like that, but they don't get into the, the hardcore stuff that you talk about. Why, why do you think that is? Well, some of them don't do it, number one, for fear of man. And the Bible speaks against that. You can't have fear of man. You, don't, you should only fear God. So they don't want to, you know, get people upset and rattled. Some of them, it's also a monetary faction. Their God is money, not God of the Bible. So because their God is money, they don't want to upset people and thus ruin the tithes and the collections and the donations coming into the church. They don't want to get people worried and stuff like that. But you know what, uh, according to Ezekiel 33 in the Bible, you're a watchman. And so if you're a pastor, a priest, or a reverend, all those titles, you know, Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, you name it, you're the head of that flock, you've got to tell the people the truth. That's part of your job. You tell them the truth and let them deal with it now rather than when things get ugly and then they're really lost and don't have a clue. At least you're telling them the truth. You're telling them to do the best that they can. You're encouraging them, and you're letting them know. But some of these pastors, they won't touch this stuff with a 10-foot pole because of fear and also the monetary aspect. And I'm calling it out because that's what I've noticed amongst some of, the, some of these pastors that won't touch this stuff. And, you know, it's just one of those things where you've got another uh, set of pastors in the country, 
They want to teach the prosperity doctrine, which is basically if you just tithe your money, send your money to our church, God's going to bless you a hundredfold, and you're going to be really, really rich overnight. And that's a perversion of, of the gospel as well because, yes, God does want to bless you. He does want to bless his children, but he can bless you spiritually and not, not just financially. He, there are different ways God can bless you. Um, you. We have to just keep things in a balance. And right now, some of these people who are just doing this stuff, they're, they're preaching these other gospels. They don't want to preach any of these hardcore truths that we're discussing that, you know, look, this is what's going on. Our country is doing X, Y, Z. They turned away from God. We know biblically when a nation turns away from God, there's consequences. And our country, the United States of America, God, is, the Bible says he's a respecter of no persons. So basically, if he's done it to ancient Israel, who was the apple of his eye, he, of course, he hammered them, he'll hammer us. <laughs> he has no qualms about doing it. He'll do it to them, too. And we could even look at ancient Rome. Ancient Rome wasn't a Christian nation, but when they fell under, the Christians there fell under intense persecution, and then the Senate got corrupt, and the morals of the country went downhill, judgment came to them, too. He allowed the other countries to overrun them, the invading armies to come, and there goes Rome. Rome was collapsed and done. So he doesn't change in his patterns of how he allows uh, these things to come to come down the pike. Um, Christians, pastors, a lot of them who don't want to touch this subject, I mean, I pray for them. I, I really do. There's been a guy uh, recently, I, I heard a podcast, a, a pastor, he said he was given a, a dream and a vision from the Lord that when things really got tough in America, some of the stuff we're talking about, like the natural disasters and the wars and stuff, he said some of the churches went and actually dragged their pastor out of the church and beat him up because he wouldn't tell them the truth. He was busy telling them, you just send me, you know, live your best life now. Send in some money and God's going to bless you. He wouldn't tell them the truth that we're telling. And it's sad because I'm not going to be one of those pastors where people under me were saying, hey, Brother Keith, you never told us this stuff could happen. No, you, if you came into contact with me, best believe you heard it. You, you've heard the good and the bad. Yes, you heard God's going to bless you, but you also heard God's going to put some judgment on the United States of America. And that's just the way it's got to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, man, when I turn on the news and I see what's going on in, in Syria and the Middle East and the United States, it it's scary, man, because it it literally feels like you know Armageddon could pop off at any moment, man. We've uh, almost all the prophecies that have been fulfilled. Um, what is it like one or two that haven't been fulfilled yet? Um, but uh, it, it it's really getting pretty pretty scary out there. Um, oh, and then you got Alex, people like Alex Jones. He says like uh, that FEMA or Homeland Security is going to all the, the churches and, and pastors and telling them to, like, spy on your flock and that, you know, they want to know what your people in your church are thinking and stuff like that. And Have you heard yeah, about that? Not, yeah, sure, sure do know about it. And I think, and I, I've checked Alex Jones out for quite some years, and you know what? Is to that? Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen that particular document come across my desk. But let me tell you something. I don't put it past the government at all, and I think that they will do that. Because me and my church, we're small. We're tiny, you know, less than 100 members. So I think that's, that document is going out to those major, super big churches, those mega churches, because they're the ones that have the most influence because they have so many people attending their churches, and plus they have TV time. So those are the ones that they're really like, they, they, you know, they're trying to find out what they can get a good bulk of information on what the masses are thinking in their area, and it's saddening because I don't, I, I take, I think Alex Jones' report is legit. I don't think that's anything far fetched because it's the same. This is the same stuff that happened in Nazi Germany, man. And we can yeah. see where our where our country has went politically. We can see the fascism that's come into our country. This stuff, it, it's like, come on, it's just obvious stuff that you know they'll do this type of type of nonsense. And that's where, where Jesus says, he, you know, we're dividing the sheep from the goats. We're going to find out which one of these pastors really are serving the Lord and they follow what the Lord says 
and as opposed to the ones that are just following the spirit of mammon, following the money, because to my knowledge, the ones that are going along with this uh, thing of, of basically snitching on their members and being a little spy for the government, there's a financial incentive in it for them. So, yeah. you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the few pastors in the country. I don't collect a salary. I don't. And that's one of my things I, 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 I ask God continually. I said, Lord, I don't want to take a, any mandatory salary, you know, for being a pastor or slash, slash evangelist. I want anything that comes to me to be a donation. Just someone, you know, someone says, hey, pastor so-and-so, I just want to give you that. You know, I don't want anything where it's like, hey, we got to take out X amount of donations for the pastor's salary. I, don't, I personally don't want that because I don't want to ever have to compromise the word where then it comes a point where I don't offend, want to offend so-and-so or any of that nonsense. I, I believe God can personally bless my finances and my business affairs outside of the church, and he'll take care of me. So that's, a, that's the route I want to walk and stay on that path because I've seen it just like what we're talking about. When money gets involved on a large levels with some of these pastors and it's coming from their particular church or denomination, then they start having to compromise on things that they would never do in a million years. They start compromising. I, and this is a compromise. When you start selling out your church members and ratting them out just because, you know, some government uh, official feels threatened because, you know, these particular um, congregants are really starting to wake up to some of the nonsense that's going on in their country. Yeah. Uh, what would you say, or what should I say to someone if, um, say, they're having a hard time, or maybe they're on the fence about uh, spirituality or, or, or prepping, and you, know, you try to talk to them, and sometimes it's too much for them, um, like prepping and spirituality, or just, you know, what, how, what do you suggest... I could say to someone if, if, if they need help or, or, have, or is having a hard time. The first thing you want to do is you want to do your best to reel them in spiritually. You do, it's not what you say sometimes, it's what you do. Sometimes people aren't, they, you can tell them all the time, you can talk to your bloom in their face and say, you know, hey, Jesus, Jesus Christ is the way, follow him, da, da, da. But what they're going to do, they're going to watch your actions. If you're telling them that, you know, Jesus is the way and, you know, the Bible is real and stuff, then you have to live your life accordingly. If you're telling them that Jesus is the way, but then you go home and you beat the mess out of your wife and they know about it, or you go home and, or you go out and you and your buddies go rob a liquor store, you know, I'm just putting that as examples, they're, then they're going to look at you like, well, dude, you're telling me Jesus is the way, but your actions aren't backing it up. So we always got to make sure as, as Christians, especially for a Christian prepper, our actions match up with the words if we say we're a follower of Jesus because that people always watch it. I've come to know that in my walk. I've learned that, that that's what people are watching. There was times I didn't even know someone was watching my actions with something, and they told me years or months later, like, dude, I saw how you handled that situation with this and this. You know, you could have you could have popped that guy in the eye and you didn't punch him in the face. Instead, you just handled it a totally different way. And now I know you're a real Christian. And, you know, I didn't even know the person was watching because there's times yeah, you'll be tempted, but you've always got to put your actions first. That's, and then, of course, what, after doing that, you always want to pray in agreement over that person. This is now, I've done, I told this in my book, but this is what, this is serious. I got so many preppers who thanked me for this. Like they'll have a wife who doesn't want to prep, who thinks that their husband's going nuts, and she doesn't want to help out with the prepping. Okay, what you do, your suf- your wife is then suffering from um, some blindness spiritually sometimes, or she's suffering from a spirit of fear because she- it's scary stuff. So what you do, you and another Christian, you pray in agreement, just like the Bible says. You touch hands, you hold hands, and say, okay hey, Tommy, help me pray over my wife so that God will open her eyes that we need to prepare. So you just simply just say, okay, we hold hands. Uh, Father, we hold up uh, Janie before you. She's um, scared. She doesn't want to prepare. And, um, Father, we just want you to open her eyes and to give her courage so she'll know to prepare and to be strong for her family. Father, we know you can do it. In Jesus' name, amen. It's literally that simple. 
when you do that, I have so many people when I taught this, these little simple principles that come out of the Bible, I've taught so many people this, that they'll come to me months later and they're saying, Pastor Keith, it worked. I'm like, what? Remember when we prayed over my husband because he wouldn't help me or he wouldn't do this? He's now helping me. He's now, he's now totally on board. He's helping me buy some extra water and extra beans and rice and stuff like that, and we're reading our Bible more. And, this, and I'm like, awesome, cool, because this, this is the way to do it. A lot of these battles we face, even amongst loved ones and friends we're trying to wake up, it's spiritual. And it's, sometimes it's spiritual blindness. And the way to overcome that, you do some of the principles that Jesus taught, pray in agreement over a person. And sometimes you don't, it might be, you have to pray over them a few times because some people are a little more hard-headed than others. So, you know, you do it a few times, but you find another Christian, another person who's solid, who's solid who believes in Jesus. And don't matter, don't get into the denomination stuff because I could be a Catholic Christian, you could be a Baptist Christian, but we're both believers in Jesus. That's what, that's the bond. Because believe me, when it comes to a radical Islamist, they're chopping both of our heads off. We're both bonded by the blood of Jesus Christ. We both pray in agreement over these people, over certain situations, and you'll be surprised at the results you will get if you just do it the way Jesus taught us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um... My wife and I, we um, we helped out this vet that was um, in, in a pretty bad way, and uh, we brought him into our house. We helped uh, rehabilitate him, and, uh, and I just I agree with what you said about you know if you see someone in trouble, you know don't just say um, to them follow Jesus, you know. Well, how is that going to help him if he's hungry, you know? You know if you you, you do what Jesus did, you have money. Give the guy five bucks to go buy some um, some food. You lead by example, and uh, that that that's what we try to do. And um, there you go. And that 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 right there goes so far. Um, speaking of vets, I got a I got I didn't I, I got a, a chapter. This does a, doesn't appear. This doesn't. This is not just for veterans, mind you. I'm gonna preface that, but. This is serious stuff because I have a chapter called Demons or, De- Demons or Depression or Destination, chapter 13 in my book, and I'm getting a lot of feedback from this chapter because it, it touches so many different angles. Um, we, uh, we've got a problem where we, we, they're, they're demonizing some of our vets for mental health, and we know a lot of our veterans, they come back, some of them have issues, but some of them are A-OK and healthy. And but what happens, this is how deep it goes, because this, this applies to preppers as well. Um, what, I try, what I showed, and God gave me this revelation, preppers sometimes, we're, we're, we'll sit there and we'll say we're going to get a bug out location. We're going to bug out here, a bug out there. And we don't really address, you know, the history of that place that we're going to. And sometimes we'll have a bug out location at like a, an, old, an old funeral home or an old cemetery, or an old um, animal slaughterhouse, or uh, sometimes an old railroad yard, or an old southern home plantation. And, and some of these places could be where slaves were killed. And it's serious stuff in the spiritual realm. Uh, cause let, me, let, me, let me break it down on a, on a real simple layman's level. If, Vince, if I, if I gave you uh, a free vacation... And I said, Vince, I'm going to give you and your wife a free vacation, all expenses paid to some beautiful tropical island. I'm paying for everything. But you're going to – the only deal is I'm going to let you guys stay at a five-star resort, and I'm paying for that too. But the hotel room that you guys are going to get, um, there w- it was the scene of a grisly murder where 20 people were killed inside that hotel room. But they cleaned it up. All the blood and everything is cleaned up, but that's the room you have to stay in. Would you would you want to take him stay in that room? No, I, of course. No, of course not, not. Not after you told me there was twenty people. I mean, I no, no, negative that's, energy. Right, they, ah, watch this. See, you that's common sense. You're like, ah, no thanks. No, most people, even atheists, I've asked that question. They're like, nah, no thanks. You see, but here's the deal. When we go to Iraq and Afghanistan and we sent our hard-working, brave soldiers and men and women over there, this is what they don't know. 
a lot of the ground, the very ground that our soldiers rest their heads on at night, these places were literally scattered with dead human bodies by the thousands. These were the sites of battles going back thousands of years. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, I can go on and on, it's from Saddam Hussein, all these different characters throughout history. There was numerous sites of people being killed in wars and battles out there, and literally hundreds of thousands of dead bodies were just laid out, and they were never were buried. They were just laid out, and the blood just drips all over the place. Now, the Bible says there is life in the blood. And I go into real deep, and I go I get real deep into this in the book and show you how serious this is. But what happens is, if you, as a soldier, you're coming over to Afghanistan or Iraq, and you're pitching tent on some of these spots where all these dead bodies were once piled up, and you're laying there at night sleeping, and you're not protected by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you're just sleeping and hanging out there continuous nights, what happens is your body. Your spirit is interacting with all these demons that were there from thousands of years ago. And that's the big unforeseen issue that's affecting some of our troops who are coming back. Some of them, yes, I understand the mental health on, on the natural level. Some of them, you know, if they drove over an IED, a, a bomb, or they were in a, a hectic explosion, saw friends get killed, yes, I understand that particular part of it. So there are some people where they do need a little medicine. But then there's the flip side where there's some guys who didn't even experience some of that while they were over there, and they were, they're coming back with all these weird um, delusions and paranoia and stuff that's going on, and it's a spiritual issue. And when it's a spiritual issue, it has to be treated spiritually, not with medicine. So there's a, a serious flip side. The reason why I brought this in the, it's in the book for preppers, because some preppers, we go and decide to pitch camp for a bug out location in some of these weird places in the country where we shouldn't. You know, if you're pitching a bug out location by an old Indian mound where all these bodies were uh, were buried from years ago, that's dangerous stuff. And I don't, I want preppers to really understand how serious this is that you don't just have a bug out location in any place. And on the flip side of this, for preppers as well, if you're prepping and you got a, you're even having a preparedness group. But you have one friend of yours who's in the preparedness group, and he's, he's on meds big time. He has to take a whole bunch of different antidepressants and stuff like that. Maybe you should check, perhaps, maybe his problem isn't so much physical, but maybe his problem is spiritual. Because if his problem is spiritual, there's simple, it, there's it, easier oh, ways to does. Most of it does go back to a spiritual thing because I, I've known a lot of people who, who suffer from depression and the, the medications out there just don't work. you, you got to get to the, the root core of the problem. And once you find out what that is and you correct it, uh, they're usually fine after that. But um, the veterans' suicides are up to like 22 a day. That, that we're losing more vets uh, at home than we are uh, at war. But it, it's not just veterans. Uh, people all across the country are suffering from depression, low energy levels. Uh, a lot of people are out of work. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of people who um, just a few years ago were making a couple thousand dollars a week. And one, one of my friends is living in a tent at a state park. A bunch of other people are homeless. And these people used to be, they used to work for tech companies and all this other stuff. And I, I've heard other people uh, describe it as uh, America is in... They have a spiritual deficiency or um, a, a sickness of uh, the spirit. Yeah, brother, this is where this is the stuff that I'm talking about because it it goes it's it gets so deep on so many different levels. And I my concern is just for my friends in the preparedness community. You know, if you can really help out that friend or that family member who's you know who's got some of these issues now, if you can realize that some of this stuff is spiritual and attack it on a spiritual level, you know, you pray over these people, you lay hands and pray over them. You, if, it's a, if it's a spirit of fear or a spirit of bondage or, you know, you can literally do what Jesus did, cast the spirit out. Say, you know, spirit of fear, we command you to leave our friend in Jesus' name. You can do this stuff, pray over them repeatedly, and you start seeing 
some really awesome results. These people start getting off their meds, and they're like, I feel so much better. And you start seeing their face totally bright up day after day. And I've, I'm living this because I see it with people I deal with um, in church as well as when I go to gun shows, and the Lord has me pray over these people, and they're getting so much better. And it's just because we don't want people who are preparing in the future to have a friend or a family member who's, you know, just dependent on the medications and then when they can't get their, you know, Prozac or Ritalin, whatever they're taking, when they can't get it, we don't want anybody flipping out, especially in a situation where everybody's already under pressure. You don't want to have that worry of someone who's in your, in your group or your family when things get tough in this country. You don't want them spazzing out, especially when you've got guns and ammo, ammo and little children in the house. So that's yeah. why I want to teach people to, how to uh, fix this and address this now. Um, if, and I, I, I tell people this, too. If you're not even familiar with this, if this stuff is a little kooky or just, or just freaks you out, but you do know you have a friend that needs help, try to find, use the Internet, type in deliverance minister and then put in your state, whichever state you're in, New York, Florida, whatever, and you'll be surprised. There's a lot of deliverance ministers both, um, some of them are Catholic, some of them are not Catholic, some of them are just, you know, Pentecostal, Baptist, you name it, who understand this stuff, and they will literally help your friend out for free in most cases, and they'll show them how to get through it on the spiritual level. And that's, that's all I'm saying because, you know, we're in, we are in for some really turbulent times in America, and we need to be as armed spiritually as we can. Amen, brother. Definitely. Yeah, I believe, man, that, you know, as far as race and stuff, there's one race. It's the human race. And, you know, all these political parties, all that stuff, that it, it makes things too confusing. It, as far as I'm concerned, there should be one party, the People's Party. And, uh, you know, this, this country needs a lot of help, a lot of prayer, and, uh, you know, I hope that just people continue to wake up, continue to... to follow God and ask uh, for guidance and help. Um, God communicates to me with signs. Um, he, I feel like he sends me messages. And when I say he, um, sometimes I think God isn't it. I, I don't even know if it's a he. It could be a she for all I know. But I believe God isn't it. And I know everyone has their own view of what God could be. But um, I get sent these signs. And that's what brought me up here to upstate New York. It's almost like God was clearing a path for me to safety. And he was giving me all these signs and symbols each day, and I knew I could feel the energy coming from it, like a vibe. I felt like he's been protecting me ever since then. And uh, I started going back to church. I started getting back into it. Um, Because the last time I went, I I was a kid. But... uh, now I love going going back to church, and now now that I have a daughter, I, I want to bring her up in a church setting. You know, I don't want I don't want her, um, you know, watching all the garbage on TV. There's pornography. You know, it's just and music isn't even music anymore. It's it's disgusting. I mean, I think we need to uh, reel things back a little bit. I, I think we we went a little too far with the whole. Um, Whatever we were trying to do was, you know. Well, we you you hit it on the head on many different angles, and to be one hundred percent real with you, man, we have went too far. Our countries went too far to the point where it stinks in God's nose. There's a scripture of that where it's there's a stink in His nose when the nation um, gets out of line, and it's like you know it's sad now where to the point where. A little kid, you can just give them their phone, and they can pull up porn on their phone. I mean, you and I, we didn't grow up with this stuff, and this is where we're at now, and we got to, like, protect our children from everything that they watch and see, and then it's coming to the point where, you know, even in our school system, they're in the school systems, you know, you got to be careful. I, I tell people all the time, if you, if you can homeschool, I prefer you do, um, because the school systems are now – inundating our kids with all this type of nonsense. They're telling kids, they're, you know, without our permission, they'll tell your son that, hey, it's okay. Um, Billy can marry Billy, and him and Billy can do whatever, and Susan can marry Susan, and they can do whatever. And it's like, well, what, if, what about me, the parent? What if I don't agree with that? And you're going to teach my kids this in school? 
and you know they're starting to teach they're teaching literally teaching kids about oral sex in in elementary school and teaching them all this stuff and it's like whoa, whoa, whoa my kid doesn't need to learn that stuff and they're teaching our kids this stuff and they're teaching um in some of these public schools across the country they're teaching the kids that they're they're taking out any reference to the Ten Commandments and God and of a Judeo-Christian They remove um, a statue in the middle of the night. The they tell, they take all it out and they're putting in, in the school system, they're telling you there's no God but Allah. And they're, they're, giving, them, they're giving all this stuff, you know, to telling kids about Allah, and it's like, well, hang on a second. So it's okay to teach my kid about porn. It's okay to teach my kid about Allah, but my kid can't know anything about Jesus. See, this is where, you know, I can, I'm telling you, our country has gone way too far. Yeah. God does not forgive. He forgives, but he doesn't have to. He's not going to. He's not prepared to let it slide, especially when it slaps him in his face. He, he has to do. He has to do something about it. And so when he takes his hand of protection off of a nation, it gets serious. And um, I tell people, you know, some of the visions and dreams that we've been getting pastors and even non-pastors and even just regular people like yourself with the tsunami, the other um, one that's been coming big time is the vision of war, of an impending war, and it's a sneak attack of the Russians on the United States, and the Russians are successful. And, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, Vince, I've, I had the vision of this, and numerous pastors across the globe. If you Google it even on YouTube, you type in YouTube, um, World War Three visions, or you yeah. know, pastors visions of, of Russia invading the United States. I, You're going to see tons of stuff come up. Yeah, I feel that the hand of protection from God is now on Russia. I think because they're they're more uh, Christian and 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 Orthodox and stuff like that than we are. And Putin's like very he he doesn't. Pro, um, publicize uh, gay marriage and all that stuff. And, you know, the, our whole lives have been led to believe that Russia is an evil, um, evil empire. They're not that much different from us. Um, they helped get rid of uh, Hitler in World War II. And I'm almost starting to feel like, you know, <laughs> we need to be liberated. You know, Russia needs to come here and liberate us from our own government. No, Dude, I'm you know, told, you, <laughs> I'm you a, said a mouthful. The, uh, look, I'm almost I'm not, hoping they do invade and kick the crap out of our government and then give us our country back. Dude, uh, let me tell you something. You, I don't find what you said to be unpatriotic because I know even biblically that's the way God ordains it sometimes. He will let a more righteous nation come in and judge the unrighteous nation. And yeah. right now there's been a role reversal, which is unprecedented in history, the former Soviet Union, which is now Russia, this was the place where they used to persecute Christians, and you couldn't have a Bible and all this stuff. Now they're letting the Christian church do what they want. They're letting Bible studies flourish. They're letting uh, the, the gospel can be preached over there. And they put in punishments for any gay pro propaganda. Vladimir Putin put this in. If a guy tries to advertise any gay propaganda on TV or magazines, you get a stiff fine. And if you do it again, the fine is even bigger. And the third time, if you do it again, you just go to jail. Where over here, we're treating, we're treating the gay population like they're special, and us people who are straight, we're the secondhand citizens. And that's yeah. how, this is how far gone it's went. And I'm yeah. looking at this thing, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, if I can see this, imagine what God is thinking, what he sees. Like if, if you're straight, you're a weirdo or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> There's something wrong with you because you're straight. And it's like we've literally did a 180-degree a role reversal where I know, like a, uh, people, like a kid committed suicide because uh, people were making fun of him because he was, he, was, he was straight. Yeah, th this, this, is, this is bananas. I mean, Russia, the role reversal now is – is, it's ridiculous, where literally our soldiers, they're told they had to take off the In God We Trust, take it off their insignia in the military. We're allowing our military men now to go into the gay pride parades in California and New York in full military gear and go down there and do all kind of debauchery in public to celebrate that they're gay, but yet the Christian soldiers are being persecuted 
big time in the military. Yep. And it's like this is total opposite of what's going on in Russia, where Russia is holding on to family values. There is no, there's no such thing as gays in the military, and there's no gay pride parades because they shut it down. And if they do try to do it, they have to be very, very quiet and cool with how they do things. And Putin lets them know that, look, this country is being run by the people, and we fear God over here. Where our country, it's like, hey, we don't fear God. No, it's more? becoming blatant now. I mean, they're, they're mm-hmm. deliberately trying to totally screw things up. I mean, every day I read about 10 or 20 things that are absolutely ridiculous, that doesn't even make this. It, it's, it's way beyond not even having uh, good common sense anymore. It's just absolute uh, deliberate sabotage of this country. And uh, even with China, you know, uh, I've had tons of Chinese friends growing up. You know, I love Chinese culture. I grew up on Bruce Lee movies. um, And they're demonizing China, too. Like, but China and Russia, they have problems with radical Islam, right? So instead of causing World War III with Russia and China, why aren't we... um, becoming closer with them, forming an alliance, and going after radical Islam. Like, I really don't get what's going on. It's just so beyond ridiculous at this point. But, you know, people, they're so caught up with their everyday life, going to work, um, at their dead-end job, living paycheck to paycheck. How are people supposed to organize and, you know, march on Washington, D.C., when they're so freaking stressed out they don't even have energy to go to work, come home. When they come home, they're so tired. They don't want to play with their kids. They don't want to talk to their wife. I mean, yeah, we're under attack on so many different levels and angles. It's just, I, you know, I can't, I, I really do think we need Russia to come here and let them take our government's ass. Excuse my uh, language, but... Uh, That's, I mean, I'm telling you, man, you said a mouthful... And I don't want anybody listening to think we're unpatriotic. We love our country. I love now. this country. Yes, and I do. Let me, but I'll, it's I'll not the country me. I grew up in, though. It's not. It's this is not, not the America I grew up in. And my my folks my folks <laughs> emigrated to this country from the Caribbean, from the islands. We didn't skip any borders. We waited our turn before we came to this country, and my family waited their turn, came to this country legally, and did all the things and became United States citizens and enjoyed the benefits of coming to this country, and my family didn't come here um, off of welfare. My family, they came here and they worked for everything they got. My mom and my dad, they literally came here with nothing and just bust their butts to get where they're at. And it's sad now. It's like you're seeing they're trying to basically say, they're trying to do the same garbage which is in Europe. They're just like, okay, people just running over our borders. They don't follow any rules. Forget all the people who are hardworking people who are waiting to come to the United States to do things honestly, they're saying people can run over the borders and then we have to use our tax money to take care of them and give them whatever they want. And it's like, well, hold on, wait a second. What about all the hardworking people that want to immigrate to this country who who are actually going to contribute something here? And it's like, no, we're not trying to hear that. And, of course, by doing that as well, our borders are wide open. We're letting in all these ISIS elements all these different radical elements that are coming in that they have no intentions of, of integrating with us, they're coming in to do damage straight up. Yes. They're, they're coming well, in not here. Not only are the borders <laughs> open, but he's actually, Obama's actually importing them. He's letting hundreds of thousands of Syrian uh, refugees in. And these aren't, like, there's women and children, but a lot of these are able bodied men who were probably were soldiers already over there. And uh, it, to me, it seems like they're scuttling the ship. It, it almost seems, in fact, I, I know it's true um, what they're doing is uh, they know we're on to them. So they want to cause as much chaos and distractions in the meantime so they can plan a getaway. And they're pretty much scuttling the ship. They're just wrecking the country. Well, they're, they're all on the smaller factor. It's a political scheme because here's what you do. If you let the in... The for the Democrats. It, there you go. If you let in 5 million... I'm just giving a, a, a small number. 5 million people. And then you give the other 10 million, 15 million here full amnesty. And then what they try to do, give them voting rights... What you've done, you've tipped the scale and you've eliminated the um, conservative vote. 
because all these people, once you get them on the government dole, they're getting their benefits, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. How are they going to vote? Let's just be real. They're going to vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. So that's how you just isolate yourself and you make sure you and your gang will forever be in power. And Mm -hmm. this is where the people have to learn to look at things on a big scale. This is how socialism, this is how it's run. And people don't know about socialism, though. Um, You know, what's with this, why socialism all of a sudden? What was wrong with America in the the, the, the 1970s, the 1980s? The, The height of America was like the 80s, right? What was wrong? What, what, what's wrong? Why are we changing things now? I thought we won the Cold War. So why are we changing anything up? Well, that's, this, we, is where, we're, this is where we're going to conspiracy because then we start, we, all we have to do is just follow the money, the money trail, and we then and study the New World Order. You, when you start studying some of the researches and what they've exposed with these guys, this stuff has been planned, man. They really know what they're doing. It's a, when, it, when you're dealing with people who are not thinking about the United States, they're, they're globalists. They're thinking global power. When they're trying to consolidate power, these are the operations you have to do. You have to kind of say, okay, the United States, we want to level the playing field. We, you can't be the big dog anymore because me and my corporations, we're going to benefit when we get all these other migrant workers from around the world making the same 10 bucks an hour. So for us to do that, we got to take the big dog and knock him down a couple notches. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's start. Let's slowly grind away at their rights, their constitution. Let's just slowly grind away at their economy and bring them down to the level playing field as everybody else. And it's it's been a magnificent plan because this this new world order stuff part this this stuff is part of the antichrist system. It's all intertwined. So that's where the the Bible and everything comes back into it, where you know. It's just it's sad, but we're living literally living in the days of seeing all these prophecies being fulfilled before our very eyes. And this yeah. is where I always tell the folks, this is not the time to play games with God. Now is the time to build that solid relationship with God, get a real good relationship with Jesus Christ now, and that way he can protect you and your family from all this nonsense that's coming down the road. Yeah. Well, again, that's why I got back into all this. Um, when I actually saw the signs and everything coming true, I said, this this is for real. And, not, you know, yeah. you've got my attention now. You know what I mean? It's just, this is real. Well, it is real. Um, I know we were, we were scheduled to do an hour, and I'm enjoying this interview, but I, we're gonna, we have to wrap it up because i got some things i got to take care of. We've been over Keith, hour. I could talk to you for hours, man. This is one... one one of the most fascinating topics and you're, you're one of the most interesting guests I've probably ever had on. Um, let's, let's hook up again real soon, man. It's good stuff. I'm definitely, I'm for it. I love your show, man. Let's, let's do it again. We'll, you will definitely, we'll stay in touch and talk. Um, like I told you, I'm going to go out the country just for uh, a few weeks. Not, I'm not going to be gone long. Um, God's willing. I come back safely and we'll do it again. And I'm pretty sure with all the shenanigans going on, on the international level as well as the national level, we're going to have plenty to talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I don't know if I told you, we're launching, we're trying to launch our own television network. So everyone's got their own channel these days, uh, the Dog Walking Channel, the Food Channel, but it's time preppers and survivalists have their own channel. So that's another thing we're working here at the Disaster Survival Network. And, um, oh, can we say a um, a prayer for everyone out there, all, all the preppers, all the listeners, uh, can you lead us off into a uh, a, a general uh, prayer of protection? And Oh, absolutely. I, I love to do that when I'm asked to, so we'll do that. Right before I pray, I just want to thank all the listeners out there who supported my book, The Prepper and the Preacher, um, by Keith Iton. That's my name. It's a spiritual survival guide. I want to thank you again for supporting the book. If you don't have the book, it's on Amazon. That's the easiest place to get it, um, Amazon.com. Or if you, if, you're, if, you have, if you don't want to, you can just uh, click me on Facebook, um, Keith Iton. I'll accept you as a friend as long as my Facebook account holds it. Um, thank you, guys, again for supporting the book. And just we got to get the word out to our neighbors and friends that now is the time to prepare physically and spiritually. So it's just very important. And I'm going to just lead off, I'm going to give us a prayer as the Holy Spirit leads, and then I'm going to sign off. I want to thank 
you, Vince, for having me on the show. It's been fun. I really enjoyed myself, and I can't wait till we do do this again. Oh, absolutely. Oh, right before that, though, um, what, what's your website? The food survival store dot com. Yep, food survival store. S U R V I V A L. Food survival store dot com, and the book is on there as well. Okay, and they can and they can order uh, survival food. And, okay, great. Okay, well, Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this day. We thank you for just providing for us. And for all the listeners today, Father, we just ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we ask that you will just unleash some warrior protection angels around every all the listeners, Father. Father, let your angels go around and protect our listeners. Father, we ask that you will send your angels even amongst their family members and friends to let them know that now is the time to really get to know Jesus now and to build that relationship, to let all the listeners know that we're not pushing a physical church building. We're just pushing the relationship first and foremost, that relationship with God now because it's very important. Father, we ask you bless all the listeners that some of them are trying to prepare and they don't have, they have limited funds. So we're asking, Father, you supernaturally provide for them, give them everything they need financially to move forward and prepare. Father, we ask that you connect them with the right relatives and friends, Father God, so that they can all be connected and look out for each other and take care of each other in the days to come. And, Father, for the people that are listening and they don't have relatives or friends, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you will put a special angel over them and let them know, Father, that they are protected, that you are with them. Your word says you will never leave them nor forsake them. And I ask, Father, that you will connect them with good friends of a like-minded preparedness mindset. Connect them with good, trustworthy, God-fearing friends. So even if they don't have a blood family member, they can have you connected with the right people. And I ask, Lord, you make those divine connections now so everybody here can have a friend and a confidant. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. And I ask you, bless this network and this station. Bless them with all their endeavors. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, thank you once again, Vince, and I'm gone, and God bless you, everybody. Thank you, Keith. Have a safe trip. Bye-bye. All right, that was uh, Keith Icon. Good stuff, man. Wow, I can't wait till we get him back on for the next show. I I could have talked to him for literally hours. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. It's reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit.